All right, I guess I guess we started. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Johannes, today. Um, this is the fourth episode of Masala Chai, the podcast, and I and I'm happy that you're here because um, it kind of explores into the kind of idea that I wanted to do with uh, with this podcast, and um, I wanted a lot of people to come in to see the different aspects of what we can really discuss. And uh, something that mm. that I personally was thinking um, was was you know exactly what you're specializing in. Uh, but before we go into that, could you could you give us a quick introduction of yourself? Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Well, uh, firstly, thanks, Edwin, for for having me on. Uh, it's an honor um, and a pleasure. I've uh, I've been having my own little podcast for about three years, but this is kind of the first time that the the tables are flipped and I'm I'm on this side. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking looking forward to it. It's exciting. Right? Um, so yeah, so my name is Johannes. Um, I uh, I'm I'm based here in Jakarta. Um, where obviously where you went to school, uh, I work at the uh, the British School, and um, actually that's how we that's how we yeah, met uh, through the through the alumni program uh, at the British School, and um, and aside from that, I also um, I also coach. Uh, I used to coach uh, CrossFit in a, in a gym that was prior to the pandemic, and I and I still do um, remote coaching. Um, I call it health and performance coaching. It's essentially. You know, all focused on uh, on human well being, on um, on basically doing the best you can with what you have um, to to maximize your your um, your output, uh, yeah. your but also your your happiness and and your health. Uh, so it's not just you know about getting the last one percent out. It's actually about living a life that's that's uh, fulfilled and, uh, and and makes you happy. That's 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 great. Actually, the thing is, I I feel like that's very very important nowadays, especially because we're we're stuck in the digital world. I think it was something similar to I was discussing in the previous podcast, but um, the concept of you know just being so diluted into uh, the digital age that we're kind of neglecting mm-hmm. our personal health, especially during the the COVID times. Um, how often is it that you would do any form of so fitness? Uh, it's very rare mm-hmm. because you're stuck in the mm-hmm. um, in your house in your room. Um, there was there was opportunities, of course, but you would never like utilize those opportunities. And I thought it's something that's very interesting. Um, and it, it kind of brings me into uh, obviously I follow you on LinkedIn. Um, and so thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll drink, link down his LinkedIn in the, in the description below. But in in one of the uh, one of your posts that I saw, I think you know which one I'm talking about. It's the one where yeah. you were mentioning about the post lunch syndrome or something I, i'm not exactly sure what it's mm-hmm. called but um it's that period from after 12 p.m mm-hmm. to like 2 something 2 30 p.m it's that feeling of of having that that sleepiness right that that sensation of, mm-hmm. of having a sleep and then you recommended that you would go ahead and just uh, you know walk around the block and get that get that sunlight mm-hmm. in you um mm-hmm. and i tried that out because i started having this issue uh, when i was younger mm-hmm. i didn't but suddenly uh after a certain point I started to get this after lunchtime. You see, it's so sleepy. Um, I couldn't really do anything. So I tried your technique out, and it actually worked. It was it was working mm-hmm. very well. And I think I, I sent you a message on on, on LinkedIn about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. How how did that come across? Like, why is that? How did you figure that out? Yeah. So, I mean, I'd say it'd be it'd be a bit remiss to say that I figured that out. Right? <laughs> sure, <laughs> that, yeah. that that would be that would be a bit um, uh, exaggerated, but. So essentially, um, and I don't know if there's a name. I, I just called it post lunch syndrome or, or, yeah. or post post um, post food syndrome, so to say. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be lunch, right? Yeah. It's, it's whenever whenever you True. take a, a big meal. And essentially, I mean, what it is is that you're kind of your as you as you take in food, your your blood sugar um, goes up. All the um, all the, the carbs from your from the meal that you're taking in. Um, get converted into into sugar and uh, into glucose, and uh, and that makes your blood sugar rise. And then uh, and then the body reacts, um, secretes insulin, and insulin helps to put that put that uh, glucose away into into the storage, into the muscle cells, into the fat cells. Um, however, that insulin is still around, and maybe after your after you've um, uh, after you've after all the, the glucose that mm-hmm. you've taken in has been has been put away, insulin is still trying to put away more, and that's kind of when you're when you wow. see your energy yeah. your energy crashing, um, and and essentially the way the way that 
the way that some activity, it can be any activity, I mean, the walk around the block is just what's accessible to most people, I assume. If you're, if you're in an office and if you perhaps go out for lunch, then rather than taking the car back, you just, you know, walk back or, or if, you're, if you're eating at your desk, which unfortunately many people do, but then at least, you know, get up afterwards and walk around a little bit. Um, that, that can help to kind of regulate the, the blood sugar level significantly better and 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 it helps you to avoid uh, or at least lessen the impact of that of that drastic rise and and dip so you you've been doing and this yeah yeah um i i wish i could say i i, I always do it. Mm. it it isn't the case right sometimes there's like a meeting right after lunch or or there's something that yeah something that prevents yeah, me from yeah. doing it but I do, I do try. Um, I do try to uh, to pay attention to that, and and the reason or kind of the the thing that made me aware of it, um, because you asked earlier, was that over over the last twelve months there have been two separate um, periods of two weeks where I've been wearing a um, a, a continuous glucose monitor. Mm. It's like a, it's like a little patch that you stick to your arm, yeah. and um, it, many people associate it with with diabetics, but it. It obviously it works for everyone, right? Yeah. It's, it doesn't it doesn't only work if you have diabetes. So, um, so I was wearing that, and and I realized as I realized exactly what I've just described, right? The, uh, with my with my meal, the blood sugar mm -hmm. went went really high, and then it came crashing down. And and if I went for a walk or if I did an activity, the blood sugar would well a it wouldn't it wouldn't even rise that that um, that drastically. Mm -hmm. Presumably because it because the sugar is getting used right away, but also the the kind of the drop was much much more soft, much more gradual, um, and that so that's what the data says. But the the way my body correspondingly feels was exactly as I said with less uh, with less of a kind of a dip and and uh, and less less lethargy and and um, and so yeah. So I saw that on the data. I had heard about it. I had read about it. Um, and that kind of said that convinced me that this thing is real. <laughs> so basically, you experimented <laughs> on yourself, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. I, I I had read it, but I didn't. Maybe not to say I didn't believe it, but I just yeah. Like like so many things you read, you you read them, yeah, you, you nod along, and then yeah, yeah, and then you don't. That do makes them. sense. That um, makes sense. And I think it's quite it's it's quite interesting because I mean we all experience this, and the thing is if if you used to go back a few a few decades, a lot of people mm -hmm. were were actually doing this without even. Uh, like knowing because most people like back in the day they would work on uh you know the fields they would work at physical mm -hmm. work right and that kind of mm -hmm. work after having a huge lunch because they tend to eat a lot more like compared to the mm -hmm. amount of food we consume now their consumption of food would be like at least two to three times more i can say from personal experience because my grandfather is a was a farmer so his consumption mm -hmm. of food would be like three times the amount that we would consume now it's because they needed that amount of carbs they needed mm -hmm. that amount of protein but again, because of the uh, the nature of their work, they would never feel tired during the day or mm. they wouldn't have that sense of, you know, that, like you mentioned, that rise in uh, blood sugar. Mm. For them, they mm. would have a constant maintained level of blood sugar because they're constantly doing activities that would bring down the insulin levels, as you mentioned. So it's... A exactly. Yeah. It, and and as, you, as you are active, right, working on a construction site or on the field or whatever, you need, you need to put energy in so that you can continuously mm. expend energy, right? It's like, um, and, and if you don't, you'll, you'll also realize your performance dropping um, and probably working on the field, there might be times where you don't have time to eat or where you eat a little bit later and, and mm. you'll, you would have seen it. You would have seen it in, in your output, in your strength, in everything dropping as your energy, uh, as your glucose, blood glucose goes down. Um, and to your point that people in the past would eat more and, and people nowadays may, might be jealous of that but <laughs> but yeah it's be, it's because they did hard labor right yeah. it's because you you spent the uh, you took in the energy because you needed the energy um uh this is funny like i don't even know if it's a fact but i read that at uh, at the peak of michael phelps's um hmm. training training days he used to consume twelve thousand calories a day jesus wow. but that's because he needed that energy yeah, right? right he was course. in the pool six hours a yeah. day and uh, and people hear that and they're like, oh, I wish I could do that. Well, 
are you willing to do the other yeah. side of that? <laughs> it's easy to eat, but you know, have to work for it. Um, exactly. The, the other aspect that I was quite curious about is, of course, you would. So your argument is to to work for the amount of food you would take in, right? And so to avoid mm. that post sleep syndrome, sorry, that post lunch syndrome, essentially go for a walk. There's another thing mm. that I've been doing, which might not combat uh, your point, but it also kind of just makes it makes me feel better because I have to be less lazy, which is just taking a power nap like a day. Oh, yeah. So what I used to do is, um, you know, I would find myself sleeping for like if I was to sleep, like, uh, let's say in three hours time uh, for me right now, it's 11. So if I was to sleep like at one after lunch. If no moderation at all, I would wake up at three o'clock, <laughs> right? I, I would just because you would not like know how long you're sleeping. You just sleep, but I, I started to moderate my sleep. I started off with an hour for like a week, and then I went down to I think I went down to forty minutes. Then eventually I went down to like twenty to fifteen minutes, and fifteen minutes mm -hmm. was just perfect for me. Like if mm -hmm. I sleep for fifteen minutes, like take a power nap. After mm -hmm. that fifteen minutes, I won't feel anywhere near to that amount of tiredness i felt and i would feel refreshed it's as if i woke up in a new day mm. so that refreshing uh sense came out for me and that works just as well as me walking out uh going out for a walk on the block so now there's two conflicting uh things i could do is either the method mm. that you mentioned which i do mm. once in a while if it's not too hot outside mm. um or i just do this just take a power nap mm. so wh where would you draw the line what do you think is you know what was your what's your thing about this yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I um, sometimes I do that too. Okay. Um, we are we're fortunate we're fortunate at uh, at BSJ that we have a, a, a room a, okay. a facility yeah. that allows um, that that allows for 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 a power nap after lunch, um, and and I do that sometimes. And I, exactly as you say, I've I've also found 15, 15 to maximum twenty minutes to be kind of like that sweet spot. If you go a bit longer than that, um, and and actually I read up on that. If you go a bit longer than that you wake up and you already you have something called sleep lethargy it's oh. kind of when you've okay because you've gone into uh, there are various stages of sleep and you've kind of gone into almost like deep sleep already and, and waking oh. up from that is, is okay then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah is then uh, gonna cause you to feel really tired it's probably still an, a net positive overall mm -hmm. right so after you overcome that lethargy you'll still be more energetic and you'll you'll feel better in the rest of the afternoon but those initial 20 30 minutes after waking up those those are a bit hard oh, so true. yeah so 15 to 20 minutes of a power nap seems to be that sweet spot before you hit a, a deep sleep but but already enough to kind of help to reset you and, and be refreshing so yeah I, I do that too um to be honest i wasn't doing that when I was wearing my glucose monitor. So I can't tell you whether that actually, whether that also kind of helps with the glucose response or okay. if that is, if there's a different mechanism at play, whether perhaps because you are give, you're giving your body another way of um, energizing up, yeah. so to say, that later then you don't feel tired. Right? So maybe, Johannes, um, this is time for another experiment. <laughs> it, it might be, yeah. It yeah, just might yeah, be. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think when it comes to this uh, sleeping thing, at least uh, taking a nap, the most difficult part I think most people will face is actually controlling that 15 minutes. For mm. me, I, I'm just quite lucky that I can actually wake up in 15 minutes if I have an alarm. But most people, they exactly. would have to snooze. Yeah. You set an alarm, time. right? Yeah, I, mm. I set an alarm. But uh, recently, I've been able to just wake up in 15 minutes because I've been doing it a lot, right? I started doing it every day. Mm um that 15 minutes is just like you know how like you don't have to set an alarm if you're sleeping every day if you, if you wake up every day at eight o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. your body clock would just automatically wake itself up right around that time right you don't need yeah. an alarm in a sense uh similar to that i found out that uh, the way that my body works is quite similar if i was to take a nap around like 2 p.m or 3 p.m i would wake up around 15 to 16 minutes after like around that time mm. um so that that's me personally but at the same time i've had friends who who I've also told about this. I'm like, guys, look, I know you guys are sleeping all the Because I have friends who would just come after class, right? They would have had a nice lunch after class. Just lie down and sleep. And a guy would wake up, like my roommate, I can tell you, would wake up like three, four hours later. And I'm like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> you should have been you should have been studying, right? Oh, I slept and I didn't realize. And I was like, okay, yeah. you should try this. And so 
Um, trying to do that, I found out that most people, or not most people, at least the people I've I've tried to engage with, have that issue with you know mm. restricting themselves to that 15 minutes because they find it so easy. I don't know if it's like a mental block or if it's something physical, but they find it so easy to just oh, it's just another five more minutes. Let's just, let me just keep sleeping. Yeah. But then that sleep, that extra five minutes goes into what you mentioned, that 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 sleep uh, mm. lethargicness, that, that you know, mm. the part where the body enters that deep sleep. Uh, yeah, that brings a bit more of a problem because after waking up from that, there would be like a solid 15 to 20 minutes where you're like, uh, yeah. you know, that, that sort of, the lethargicness comes in and it might yeah, as well just have slept. Yeah, no. And that's also where you then want to continue sleeping. Mm. I, I find that when my alarm wakes me up after 15 minutes, I'm like, it's a pity it's over, but I'm good to go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you go a little bit longer into like 20, 25, 30, then it's like really easy just to hit hit snooze and and kind of try and get an extra five <laughs> minutes. But it's not it's not going to it's not going to help. Right. It's you, not as much as that 15 um, minutes would have helped you. Yeah. Correct. Correct. But You'd I, actually need. Mm. Um, and there's there's um, studies around like the length of a sleep cycle you'd actually need 90 minutes around people say it's around 90 to 120 minutes so if if you had the time if you napped for let's say 90 minutes and had your alarm after you should wake up after exactly one sleep cycle and you should feel perfect oh um, interesting but 90 minutes but who's got 90 minutes true true <laughs> i mean who does have an, i think the issue at hand is that no one has time anymore that they just find mm. it so simple to you know I think that's that's where your 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 point with the the post lunch uh, syndrome would work better, because it would mm. that walking around the block would probably take less than fifteen minutes, but mm. also would have a probably a longer effect, right? Because you're basically maintaining from the rest you got from the light the night before, uh, for yeah. the rest of the day. So that probably would give you uh, larger gains uh, in the short time. But yeah, I think I I agree. Although it is. It is quite individual, and and I I have mm. personally I have absolutely no issues with with the power nap. As I said, I, I do it myself. I I don't I don't look down on people who <laughs> take a nap. Not at all. Not at all. Um, I'm I'm fully in support of it. So whatever works for you. If the if the 15 minute nap works better than going out, because if you I mean especially here in the tropics, you go out at lunchtime, you might be you might be sweating, you might be uncomfortable in in your in your office for the rest of yeah. the day after that. Um, so if if you're better off going to a quiet corner and taking a nap, uh, totally fine. Um, it also, I suppose, depends on, do you generally sleep enough, right? If, ah. if you only sleep six hours every night, I'd probably rather recommend you take that nap. Um, if, but if you get your solid eight hours every night, then maybe do the walk. Um, it's, it really depends a little bit on that as well. So let's be a bit more realistic here, right? I think sleep is one of the most, obviously is the most important thing out there. But... Mm. Uh, that on a realistic term, it's not ideal for anyone in this day and age to be able to get that eight hours, right? Because assuming you're going out for work at like six o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning, getting ready and out there. Mm -hmm. But at mm -hmm. the same time, you have stuff to do until like 11 or 12. So what is that balance there? What what do you recommend? Because I think for at least the large part, the the audience for my podcast would be people around mm -hmm. my age, around that, uh, mm -hmm. around the 18 to, to 30 that's at least in Singapore, there's no other people watching my, my or listening to the podcast. So for, for these people in their in their young state of mind, what, what would you recommend? Is it is it is it seven hours? Is it eight hours? How, how do you how do you maintain that? Generally, um, as far as I'm aware, um, studies show it, it, it should be seven to nine hours for, for adults, mm. right? It, it should be somewhere between seven to nine hours. And the tricky part about that also is that it isn't it isn't seven hours in bed. If you turn off your light at eleven and your alarm goes at six, that doesn't mean you've actually slept seven hours, right? Mm. It, it, once you and and these things are um, omnipresent today in these days. But if you track your sleep, I do it with an aura ring. Oh. Um, you could use a, a, a Garmin or whatever. If you track your sleep for a while, you'll quickly realize you don't actually sleep as long as you think. Um, so that's that's the first thing, right? Even if you turn your lights off at 10 and wake up at 6, you probably didn't sleep 8 hours. That's kind of the first thing just to realize. Um, then I want to go back to something you said earlier, is sleep Sleep is the most important thing, mm. and, and I, I really do believe that. So I think 
I think you do need to, if, if health and emotional stability and, and performance and all of these things, um, if they are, if they are of interest to you, then you should prioritize your sleep. And I know it sounds easier said than done. You said your audience can be yeah. up to, uh, the young, up to the, let's say low thirties, which is often where people start to have children. So yeah. I'm, I'm fully aware that <laughs> there, there are no parents in this world that get eight hours of yeah, sleep. <laughs> that doesn't sure, happen. Sure. Um, but, um, but as, as long as you, as much as you can control it, try to get as close to eight hours as you can. Um, and personally from, for myself, um, I've realized that actually just in the last few weeks then, because I saw, I saw a Ted talk about the, um, about sleep and how eight hours is like the magic number. Mm. So I've, I've looked at my, at my data and I really thought, okay, I need to, I need to prioritize this more. I used to, I used to wake up at, at 5 a.m. Mm. to try and yeah. do a little bit of, a bit of movement, a bit of like the journaling and all these things. And now I've told myself, no, I really need to prioritize eight hours of sleep. So now my alarm is as close to, oh, I, as late as I can make it, yeah. which is 5.30. No, not, not that much better, but 5.30. And I also try to really have lights off, lights off by nine, mm. which if you add that up, that gives you eight and a half. So you yeah. think, yeah, it should be easily enough. But it, it doesn't always, I, again, I track my sleep and it doesn't, I don't always hit the eight hours. However, since I've been doing that, which is now about 10 days, All right. I haven't had a coffee. I haven't had a coffee anymore. I get to work and I, I don't feel like I need coffee. It's like, it's magic. It's, it's really, I'm, it's, it's, it's like this thing with the, with the glucose monitor. It's, it's, you read something, but then you actually do it on yourself and it's eye-opening. So, wow. okay. so while in the past when I slept, and I've always been someone who likes to sleep, so I've always been sleeping seven seven hours, seven hours, 15 minutes, something like okay. that, according to my data. But I, I would get to the office and I would be like, okay, in order to get my brain going now, let's have a coffee. Uh, then two hours later, let's it. have another one. And then I can, then I can go. I, I'm, I'm the same. Um, and now I, I don't. Yeah. I, okay. So for me, I'll explain, I'll, I'll tell you what used to be the, the way we used to do in the army. So in the military, we, especially, especially during the training phases, the first four months, they would they would like it's it's a requirement because they take safety very important so there's they definitely mm. say oh you must have seven hours of sleep that's that's the mm. because that's the minimum they, that they'll give us like it's, it's oh, standard okay. so they'll make us go to sleep like like force us to go to sleep at 10 30 and wake us up at 5 30 in the morning so that, that that's that guaranteed seven hours they'll say um and they try to not let us sleep in the middle uh because mm. they they will say that that kind of goes against the uh, because they have like this, some sort of plan that like, they never actually tell us what it is, <laughs> right? <laughs> but then they say, yeah. "Oh, we have we have specialists who have who have figured this out, and uh, they recommend that you sleep at ten thirty, wake up at five thirty. Because we do a lot of physical work the entire mm -hmm. day. It's mm -hmm. a lot of exercise, this training. I mean, it's the army, right? So th mm -hmm. there's a lot of that going on. But then you'll see that uh, for the amount of work that you do do, uh, at the end of the day, that seven hours is actually more than enough." For us, at least, mm -hmm. and it worked. Mm -hmm. But then, after that four months, coming back out, you know, getting into a proper job, you will realize that there is no such thing as that seven hours in the real world, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That was just training phase. Like you're in a, a controlled environment. Uh, but now, because we had shifts from all over 24 hours, I spent a lot mm -hmm. of days working. I literally only was working during uh, 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. So I was awake the entire night because that was my shift. And mm -hmm. I would see myself because alternate days I would have to do the opposite. So first two days I would have to work 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then uh, I have a, one day to reset my body clock. And then the next two mm -hmm. days I would have to do uh, mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's the mm -hmm. exact opposite. And I found myself mm -hmm. getting sick very often. Like yeah. I was just it was just not good at all. Uh, and, and, and this is exactly why, like once I entered university, I found myself like, I really strictly need to get that six to seven hours of rest. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is where, Man, okay. yeah, this is where I'm going to ask 12, you 12 hour shifts. That's brutal. Yeah, it, that's, it is. That's a, uh, but it, you know, they'll, they'll figure that they'll say something and they make yeah. it sound like, oh, it's mm -hmm. fine. It's, you know, there are some, uh, some f minute details where it, it, it makes it sound off as it's okay. But I mean, this is where I wanted to ask you an important question because I, I often have this 
argument with my parents about this one <laughs> and uh, with a lot of other people as well. So this is the tricky question. Here it goes. So the question is, is does it matter when you sleep and wake up, even if it's hitting that eight hours? So does it matter if you sleep at 2 a.m. and wake up at 10 or if you sleep at 10 and wake up at 6? Right? Does it matter even if you have that eight hours or is it does the timing of which you go to sleep actually like does it actually do something mm. Mm. what do you think so about that from from what i know um it, it matters um and not not to the point where um where where let's say sleeping later is is worthless yeah. right not, not not like that but it matters there and again this comes back to to data if if you look at your for example if you looked at sleep data your own or or just like you know um, a, a population um, what they found is that the the different sleep phases that I briefly touched on earlier so there's like uh, a light sleep and then then comes uh, then comes a, a phase two sleep which I now forgot what it was so phase okay. one phase two then comes like um, deep sleep and then comes the the, the REM sleep the one where you dream oh. um, with the rapid eye movement um, so these four sleep phases um, kind of circulate through um, a cycle of about 90 minutes so okay. you, you keep you keep getting each of these so let's say if you slept for seven and a half hours you'd get five you'd get five complete cycles yeah cycles of uh, of, of that of that sleep architecture um, however the the distribution of of these phases varies the later into the night or the earlier in the night you have more deep sleep mm. and and then the later in the night you have more of the REM of the REM sleep, which is why typically, uh, if you remember dreams, it's typically from kind of just before you woke up. True, right? It's not it's not from the beginning mm. of the night. Um, uh, so so in that regard, going to going to sleep much later, two a.m. to ten, yeah, two a.m. to ten a.m. as in your example, the the type of sleep that you get will be slightly different. Than what you okay. would have gotten if it was okay. six uh, uh, ten p.m. to six a.m. Um, and and different sleep phases obviously do different things to your brain, right? I mean, your brain is kind of mm. um, regenerating during sleep. That's that's why you sleep. Um, so so yeah, so it does matter, um, but it's still it's still good if you can get the eight hours, right? If you uh, where you really start to run into problems is if you sleep 2 a.m. to <laughs> to 6 a.m. <laughs> then then you yeah. messed up the architecture yeah. and the duration is too is too short. Um, and then on your point about well shift working, so shift working has been found to be quite problematic mm. as in for long term health. Uh, I guess well first of all in the army you probably there's there's no way around it yeah. right that the whole operate the whole machine needs to run 24 seven. So some so some people will have to work the night. Um, the other thing is you're only there for a couple of years at most. You guys are still young. It's it's probably all okay. Yeah. Um, but in the long run, so people working shifts, let's say someone working at the airport for 40 years mm. and they always work nights, that has health implications simply because your body is supposed to be up when the sun is up and down when the sun mm. is down. And not the other way around um so that that has implications this is yeah this is something that i i feel like is because if you have control over something like something like this we should typically have control over because uh mm -hmm. i mean working in shifts yes um it is problematic but at the same time there is we're doing it because we need it so i mean mm -hmm. i wonder if people have actually done something about it to like figure out a way to you know to, to find a way to like actually maximize this by giving people less health risks but also um you know getting in that shifts they need it's it's a really interesting yeah. thing because i mean obviously you don't do it in, in normal work environments like for instance our, our school we wouldn't obviously not do it because mm. school works mm. overnight right you just shut down the mm. school um but in your experience have well, you I had mean, in let's say in in indonesia yeah you have security 24 7 for example ah, right true, so, true, so true. these guys these are yeah, working yeah, yeah. nights every night mm. and and they do it on on rotation i don't i don't think the night guard is always the night guard so so they okay. they also change um and then and then a lot of a lot of industry kind of if you've if you've ever been on the road at like 3 a.m you see 
truck after truck after truck. So all these guys are working nights. Um, so a lot of people do that. So I think there is a lot of, um, maybe not a lot, but there is definitely research going into kind of trying to figure out how, what is the impact, how to mitigate that impact. Um, when I was, when I was um, doing the, the certification for the Hinsa performance uh, coaching, I met, well, met is too much. I, I attended a webinar by, by a sleep researcher and they actually, they, at that time, they were working on, a, on an app. Um, they had one for, for managing jet lag. It's called Time Shifter. Interesting, okay. And I think, I think they, have, they have by now produced another one that is, that is focusing on shift workers. And it basically kind of tries to help you um, to, to mitigate or to reduce the impact of, uh, or the negative impact of, of the shift work, of, of not seeing the sun and uh, basically getting up against your body's uh, circadian rhythm and all these things um, and I, I tried the one for the jet lag and it, it works really well right I, I traveled to Europe that summer and and I followed their advice and and I had no problems wow. it's amazing okay time shifter right all right well, we'll have time shifter have yeah. To, yeah check that out look. but yeah this is so what other thing then would you recommend for for youngsters then uh, in order to get because I mean you're focusing mainly on on mm. health fitness um, mm -hmm. I think when it comes to fitness, most people, they assume by default, it's going to the gym, but mm -hmm. they don't understand that there are, you know, simple ways of doing just normal calisthenics at home, um, just going out for a walk or a jog. So what's mm -hmm. more, actually, this is an important question I wanted to ask. What's more important, do you think? Do you think uh, calisthenic fitness is more important or, or cardiovascular, um, just cardio in general is, is, is more beneficial or are they two separate things that you need a mix of yeah it's probably mostly most like the latter you you need you kind of need everything mm. um you you need a um you need a certain level of strength um and and you don't really think about it that much especially as, as you're young because you know you you can do everything that your your daily requirements are you can if, if necessary, you can carry, carry a heavy suitcase, you can, you can travel, you can do all these things. But as you get older, um, strength and the loss of strength, the loss of muscle mass, it, 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 has, a, it, it, it has huge implications on just the quality of your life. Um, and that is the same goes for cardiovascular fitness, right? If you're, if you're out of breath, just walking up the stairs, that has an impact on, mm. on the quality of your life. You, you might... You might even pull back from certain activities and you won't go for a walk with your friends. So, so you're then stuck at home where everyone else, when everyone else is out. So these things have applications. But um, to your point about having to go to the gym, it doesn't have to be the gym. If, if, you are, if you're doing push-ups, squats and sit-ups at home and, and you're happy with that, do that. Do that. It's... it's, it's it's a million times better than not doing anything. It's a million times better than thinking, oh, I should go to the gym, I should go to the gym, I should go to the gym, but then you don't, yeah. right? So, so yeah. um, whatever I, yeah, you definitely. can. I'm mm. an advocate for this as well because there was a phase in, uh, after I finished uh, the service, there was a phase where I completely hated PT. And I was just like, there's no way I'm doing <laughs> I bet. I've, uh, this is uh. PTSD for me is what I was thinking. Um, but I, I quickly found out that, you know, having that lack of, any physical activity because I, I straight up went mm. for I think four to five months with zero physical activity. I did no mm. exercise, no running, and it completely mm. deteriorated my my muscles. I, I couldn't mm. I mean, like you mentioned, I, climbing up the stairs was was a, a task. And for my age, that's mm. a bit that's a big issue, mm. right? Because mm. I'm obviously not old, um, and that that was a bit of a like a like a breaking point for me because I was like, okay enough with the trauma <laughs> Let, yeah. let's get back and so yeah, yeah um that was kind of like the the point for me where i was deciding to get back into into shape and and i did do that and it actually has a lot more implications than just the fitness mm. i mm. i found out that um psychologically speaking it makes me feel much better i, I don't know how to describe mm. it but i i think you can mm. understand when i when i say that uh, I might just be the endorphins released when I'm exercising mm. or I don't, I don't know what type of, um, uh, you know, chemicals are being released. But whatever it is, it's working because I was much happier. 
my introverted self. I'm, 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 I'm actually introverted. It's, it, it's kind of weird. I know people think I'm extroverted, but uh, my, my, my 16 person, my 16 personalities test says otherwise. But um, uh, that, that's that, that part of me started to, you know, start to be a bit more open. I was a bit more talkative and um, I, I found a, a better self in me. And I've been telling a lot of my friends to do this. I've been telling them, mm-hmm. look, it, ta- it takes a small effort, but go out, you know, do a bit of exercise just in your house. Just do 10 push-ups. What I like to do is, especially because now we're students, right? If I'm like doing some studying, if I couldn't answer a question, every time I fail uh, to answer a question, I do five push-ups. So that day I end up mm-hmm. doing like 200 push-ups because <laughs> <laughs> that's so many questions I feel. No, I'm kidding. But uh, but having that like challenge, challenging yourself mm-hmm. it works for mm-hmm. me personally because I can be like, no, no, I can do it. Uh, and so I, I challenge myself and I've been telling some of my friends because it might work. Um, but what are other techniques? Because I think the main thing is discipline, right? And most people just don't have the discipline because it's so easy to not do mm-hmm. something than it is to do it. Uh, what, what would you, what would your advice be for, for, for discipline in, in this case? Um, that's, I mean, the thing you mentioned, I, I totally, I totally resonate with that because I, I feel that as well. I, in fact, to almost to the extreme where if I don't go, if I go five or six days and it happens right with illness and stuff without right, exercise, right. I already, I'm feeling mentally down and I, and I, I can't place it until I realize, Oh yeah, you haven't, I haven't been to the gym in a while. And, and that's <laughs> actually, I really, I really enjoy, I really enjoy that. And I know most people, maybe not most, but a lot of people don't, a lot of people for, for them, it's a chore, just like for me doing the dishes is right. It's something that has to be done. So I do it. Um, and and for 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 them it's it's really about building that momentum mm. that to come to that point where um where you see well where you where you subjectively feel the yeah. the differences and and I'm talking about the the differences to your emotional well being right not not necessarily have you lost weight or do you have okay. a six pack now yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. not it's not about that I mean that takes that takes significantly longer depending on where you start from so so kind of to wait until that happens yeah i can i can see how how you might lose your motivation along the way but um actually there's an interesting book and maybe you've uh maybe you've read it uh, atomic habits ah, um, yeah james classic. james clear classic, yeah. so yeah so yeah exactly classic um so it, i mean that one talks about all kinds of habits but it's it's it is like that right you kind of need to um you need to you need to do something first so that the mo- so that the momentum builds mm. and then discipline for lack of a better word follows right you don't to try and to try and will yourself into always doing it that that, that doesn't, doesn't work, work so well yeah it's it's more like the kind of okay i i start and and by doing it i'm as as he says in the book i'm, I'm casting a vote for mm. for um for the for being a kind of person who who does this right yeah. i mean uh, I, I don't like exercise but i am someone who goes for a walk and you 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 basically you vote for that every day every day i, I will and then and you realize oh that's the, the the point or the kind of the the outcome the typical outcome is that you actually become that person right you're yeah. like the one where okay i am the one who goes for a walk after my lunch and then from there you're like okay i am the one who goes for a run in the evening so whatever it is and you build on that um so the start is always difficult um and there are ways to kind of hopefully help you get over that start with um, finding a finding a community or or at least a kind of a buddy to to do these activities with other kinds of other kinds of external motivators and it could be it could be a bet right you could be you could ah, bet with yeah, someone yeah. some money that that you will you will do this for for two weeks or and if not then you lose the money maybe that motivates you whatever the case is try and build that initial momentum um so so that you can vote for yourself being the person that does these things right and then and then it uh, it hopefully falls into place and that goes for everything right that's not just exercise that's you can be the you can be the the person who doesn't eat dessert or whatever it is, right? You can you can vote for anything, vote for vote for being any kind of mm. person. Yes, whatever you need to or you need you need or you want to achieve. 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's that's a that's a good way of putting it because I think yeah, I agree. Doing it itself is already uh, the step one. You've already completed it. The mm-hmm. fact that you've been doing it is good. And I think most people fail exactly what you mentioned is when it starts to feel like a chore, right? Mm. Right. You're not as you're not enjoying it as much, or you feel like you're being forced to do it. I find it very similar because uh, a lot of habits are are the same way. Like um, uh, doing work, for instance, I I mean I run a YouTube channel and this is going the same way. Uh, at one point, it felt like it was a chore because I forced myself to always upload mm. a week, and that doesn't just work. It doesn't work for me because I I do it because mm. it's a passion, it's a hobby. But mm. when you get to a point where it doesn't feel like that anymore, you just completely lose the motivation, and that's not mm. good, right? And so I, I have learned out, and, and that book is an amazing book, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Guys, please go read that if you have time. Uh, it's, it's an amazing book. And similar to um, the subtle art of not giving I mean, the word mm-hmm. itself, I don't want to say it, but uh, it, th- that's also another great book because it's, again, it talks about these, these habits that you can build, successful habits that work, that have been proven to work, and uh, in, in general are for the betterment of, of your well-being. And I, and I agree with that. Uh, and I'm, I'm still starting to, to ap- apply them in my life as well. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Yonaza. That was pretty good. But anything mm. else from you on your end, like a final say that you would like to, uh, you know, put, a, put out a legacy on your on your journey here and, and then Masala Chai to, to the audience? <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I mean, th- thanks for having me and thanks for kind of ex- uh, exploring all these ideas. And uh, yeah, yeah I, I, as you can probably tell, I can I can talk about health and uh, fitness and all these things <laughs> for hours. Uh, I'm, I, I never get tired of that. But um, yeah, I'm guessing so for your audience, uh, which is typically a little bit younger than my audience or yeah. younger than I am, um, I think the, the one thing to say is don't put this off until your 40s or 50s, mm. right? Start start earlier start start building building habits that help to support uh, a healthy life uh, and and a healthy happy and long life um start now well, whatever age you are yeah. start now and if that if that is if that is going from 6 hours to sleeping 6 and a half hours do that right it's a uh, it's still i'm not saying you you all need to but i am saying you should <laughs> sleep eight hours but i know you maybe you can't yeah so yeah, 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 yeah. so do what you can um um go for go for a walk go for a run exercise once a week um if you if you're not doing anything go for once a week um it's better than nothing true and um, no one no one no one expects that you jump from zero to three to four times a week right away yeah um if you're living off mcdonald's you know, um, replace two or three meals a week with something a little bit better. D- don't try to overhaul everything, but do know that everything you do now, both in the positive and the negative, will have implications later. Ah, um, will have consequences. It, it, it's it's just it's just a fact. Um, yeah. And you might you might not feel them in the next ten years uh, or twenty even. But at some point, everything kind of comes back, both the positive and the negative. If you are active now, you'll you most likely age better um, and, and age more smoothly. Um, and the uh, the opposite is also true. So take a stock of your life. Take a stock of your lifestyle. Um, what are the kind of the low hanging fruit that you can attack? Um, and just pick a couple of those and uh, and work on that. Wow. All right. Thank you very much, Janice. That's uh, th- this is the kind of conversations I want to have a lot more in, in this podcast. And I would be really happy if you could come back another time and we would totally um, I would I would I actually want to do this with more guests at once mm. so we can have a mm. lot more fruitful conversations. Um yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I don't want to keep you any longer. I know you have you have work to do. So with that being said, yeah. thank you so much for joining, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Masala Chai. And um, thank you, uh, thank you so much yeah. for having me, Adrian. No this worries. was a, a real pleasure. Really great to be on this side of the table. Uh, really uh, yeah, it. yeah, and, it must uh, be an experience. Happy, no? happy to come back anytime. Sure, thank yeah, you very let much. Let me know. Yeah, we'll do for sure. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put Johannes's detail, his LinkedIn, in the description. Anything else you guys would use to connect with him, you can go ahead and do that. And um, as always, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.